computer. Okay, uh, my name is Mike Chirelli. And tonight I'll be talking about how I use the white plexiglass table in my still life photography. And <clears throat> introduction of who I am. I've been doing professional photography from 2010. 2013, I got an associate degree from Montgomery College. In 2015, I joined Professional Photographers America because I really like their business courses. In 2017 and later, I joined some of the affiliate clubs of Professional Photographers of America. And I just want to let you know that we'll be doing meetups outside too. It won't just be all Zoom because Larry Hogan, the governor of Maryland, this Friday, lifted a mask update. You don't have to wear a mask outside, but you probably have to be six feet away. But, you know, masks are no fun and everyone knows that. These are some sample images I'm going to do. And if you have any questions, just feel free to stop me. You can also send your email in the chat too, and also the question. So these are recent images I did. This one I did last night. And so we're gonna talk about how I use the white plexus table and how I use, you know, like white cards and silver cards. And then I'm about to go to the agenda next. It talks about more what I'm gonna talk about. And of course, tonight we're going to talk about the white plexus table, but we're also, we're also going to be talking about strobes, but how to add a simple lighting modifier like a white card or a silver card to add more light. Silver cards and white cards are great for adding fill light. There's a lot of stuff you can use to add light. And I'll talk about the camera settings, and I'm also talking about the equipment to use and all the equipment, not just the camera equipment. And then I'm going to do a demo in Adobe Camera Raw. And then I'm going to do Adobe, a demo Adobe, with Adobe Photoshop with actions, blend modes, and filters. I use actions differently. I like to group them because it's a quicker workflow and you get things done faster. And there's ways to use blend modes and also filters and adjustment layers. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to stop me. You can always email me or just, and I'll check the chat too. These are all my plexiglass tables. We talk about the white one tonight. This is the black uh -huh. one. Is that my question? This is a regular one, just for the foam board. And this is like a light painting one, like just like a piece of board over like a cube. And they're lighting modifiers. And these are lighting modifiers that could be used with any table. And that includes the white plexiglass table. And if you want to add lights, in a dramatic way, I'd recommend like a mirror or a silver or a silver reflector. Gold cards are great. They're great in portraits and like a yellowish taint. You could also do this with still life too. And if you want to add lights in a soft way, you want to try white reflectors, white cards. But then if you want to like black light, you could use black cards. Black cards are great for taking out glares. Or when a strobe, you know, gives out too much light, you can use a black card, the black part of the light. It's called when a strobe bleeds too much light. A black card is a great solution for that. And then you have plastic fusion scrims, and I'll tell you how to make those. Just like a plastic fusion background and stretcher frames. You can also buy the frames from a store; they're already made. Then the colorful gels, and colorful gels are great or changing the color of the background, also for changing the color of the subject. And I'll demonstrate that, what they look like. And then there's medium sized plexiglass sheets where you can put the plexiglass sheet in front of the strobe to make the light softer. And there are other ways to use plexiglass sheets like a small table over a stand, like a stool. 
and I'll show that later. And then a cinephil. Cinephil is like black aluminum foil where you can use a small spring clamp to attach it. Then you have blinds. Blinds are great for when you angle the light at a 45 degree angle to get good contrast. This is, you could do so much with blinds with just controlling the natural ambient light. And then spring clamps and CUG clamps, they're great in all sizes where you can hold stuff. And I'll demonstrate that slides coming. And then they're duct tape and clothes pins. That's great for like attaching shell gels to the strobe. And a lot of this you can buy at an art store or a hardware store. And some of this you could even buy at a drug store. And this is the white plexiglass table. And this has been used for 2015. It's still the same one. And I bought this because of the cheaper price. And this frame's good. It's not the Manfrotto frame, but if this were the Manfrotto frame, this would be a lot more expensive. I'm gonna check my, uh, let's see. Okay. And there are many ways to use lights with the white plexiglass table. You can use one light, you can use one flash or continuous, you can use a LED light, you can use natural light. And two things are very important in using this table. It's angle the camera and also position the light. With doing each, you can get a completely different shot. So the next set of slides, I'm gonna talk about how to use one light, and then two lights, and then three. And I'm gonna talk about how to use like white cards and silver cards to bounce and fill light. This is how to use one light. You have a nice, plastic background or a vinyl background, it's white. You have the light up here. You can also put the light over here or over here, or even over here. You can also have like fill cards, like white cards or silver cards to bring in details of the shadow or even add light. And if you have a shiny subject, I recommend like a white reflector or a harsh or um, a plastic fusion to take out the glare. You can also use like a polarizer too to take out the glare. You can also, of course, use a black card, a black foam card. This is another way to use a one light. And this is a clear glass subject. You have the strobe facing the camera. And you have a, like a white screen reflector. And this produces like a nice white background. This is an Elecom strobe, and you probably have to power it all the way down the tube. This is very powerful. And also, you could do a lot just with this light. You can aim the light up, you can move the light back. So much you could do just with one light. And later on, you can add white cards or silver cards to bounce in light. And I'll talk about that later. This is a way to use two lights. You can have a light here coming at a 40 degree angle. You can have a light here, here. You can also have a light here. You have a top light. You can have a light at a 40 degree angle or at a 45 degree angle. You can also put in fill cards like silver or white cards that bounce in light naturally. Again, like the one light, I recommend using like a scrim to make the light softer or to shoot through like a white reflector.
This is another way to use two lights. If this were the only light, this would be like a silhouette, unless that's what you want. But you don't have to have light here. You can have the light here. You can also have fill cards or silver cards to bounce in some light. Or you could have the light here. You can also have fill cards and silver cards, depending what you want to do, to bounce in dramatic or soft light. So many ways to use two lights just with this setup. You want to have the back. This is something like white, a, a white background. And this is going to be your key light. And it can be here, here. And the right reflector, the silver reflectors, they're just a fill light. And this is how to use three lights. And this is just one way. We have this is plexiglass, which means, depending on where you put the light, you can get a reflection. If you want a reflection, you want to leave the light over here to the edge, and you want to power it all the way down to two, as long as low as you can go. And then you want to angle the light at a 40 from your angle at over here, and you get reflections. Or if you don't want to have a reflection, you have the light directly underneath it, and you want to power up your strobe. The tricky thing of this is if you have too much power, you may have to power down your strobe. And these are powerful Ellen Chrome strobes. And you have a strip light over here, which would be the key light. And you have an underneath background light. And then this is for the other background because we have light coming up, we have light coming through. You can have this light over here. You can have another light over here. You can also have. Um, Silver or white cards on the side to bounce in light. And this is how this is how I use um, gels over the strobe. You could do this with spring clamps, CUG clamps. These are just armature clips, they bend. And these are just, you know, clothespins you can just buy at a drugstore and you just attach to the strobe. And this is how to use spring clamps if you want to make the curve a little uh, wider. You could also do this with very big uh, CUG clamps. And these, um, these are just, this is like a white foam wall. And these are just spring clamps. And I recommend the bigger ones. These are good too, the three inch ones, but the five inch ones are even more sturdy. And you, these could hold anything. It could be like a white plexiglass, a black card, a silver card, a white card. And this is like a scrim. And these are made out of stretcher frames from Plaza Arts. And this is a draft fusion paper that I bought from BH. And this is just a bucket to hold things. I'll talk about this later. And this is just like the um, grid for a strobe. It's just vinyl that attaches on the strobe. This is great in portraiture. This is also great for still life too. And this is the, um, the spring clamps holding up like a silver card. It could be a white card. This is a big scrim. This is great for putting in front of a strobe, any type of strobe, a strip light, a regular strobe to soften the light. I also recommend using like a white reflector where the light is a lot even softer than this. So I'm going to give a midsection shine that when you add a light, 
before adding another light, try adding like a white card or a silver card. It's a nice way to add light naturally. And then you may have to add another light, and they may have to put a soft, like a reflector. So much you can do with one light, two lights. Our goal is just to make the um, photograph look as natural as you can. If you have any questions, you can email me at the email right here, mpicturelart2016 at gmail.com. If you have any questions, just stop me, just interrupt. I have a question. I did check the chat a while back. I don't see any questions. Now we're talking about the camera settings. This, is, this applies to any camera. This is the Canon, of course, but Nikon's very similar, but look a little different. Whenever you still alive, I always like to try to use ISO 100. You have the less noise added. And I like to start with aperture of 16 and then 1 25th of a shutter. And sometimes I like to cut the shutter in half to control the exposure better. And I always shoot in manual mode in still life is where you, know, you control the shutter, control the aperture. Well, then I use, you know, bulb mode for light painting. And I'll talk about how I do that with the kid release later. And I was shooting raw, which it says here, because this has the most editing capabilities, much more than JPEG. This is evaluated mode. It's great for contrast. Sometimes I can use spot reading mode with aperture priority, where you select the aperture and the camera selects the shutter. I always like to use, you know, daylight balance. It's about 52K. I like to use a standard picture style because it's the sharpest. And I like to use a zone autofocus because it's easier than a 19 point because sometimes a 19 point has to keep resetting. And zone is easier because it doesn't reset as much. And then I like to use a dry bag for single shooting in the autofocus mode AI. It's great for still life. You always want to make sure you shoot with the full battery. And this is like the white balance diagram. Like I said, I always like to use it set at the 52K. And the temperature is measured in Kelvins, but you can always raise it with the custom white balance. And these are the other temperatures. Now I never use the AWS auto white balance. It's at least natural and you're adding artificial color in the photograph. And there's also the custom white balances where you shoot a white card and then you make some settings, you set the white balance. First time I just like to use this daylight. I like to use the long exposure noise reduction because sometimes it takes very, very long exposures. And most times I just have it at one. Some people say you don't need this. If you have a properly exposed image, that's fine. I like to do something a little different. One's automatic. What that means is when you take a picture, something may happen, something may not. And it goes back to the regular screen quickly. Two is great for really long exposures, like for correcting blue color cast. Early DSRs might have had this problem, and I think early they did, but with technology advancing, um, modern DSRs don't have this problem. But if you need to you know, work with long exposures with correcting blue color cast, you could use, you know, switch to two. But it'll take a while to get back to the regular screen because it's doing a lot of stuff. That's why I just like to use a one. And I always like to use two for the high speed noise reduction. 
Some people just use standard or one, like, but I like to just use one or two. Better to use zero, one, or two than to disable it. It'll make Photoshop easier, but I'd recommend, you know, zero, one, or two. And this is the white, this is like the color space. A lot of times I like to start with Adobe 1998, which is over 57 billion colors. And then I converted the sRGB. It's great for posting on the web, but then you're only stuck with 16.7 million colors. And then we do some printing that cuts it down to 16,000 colors. But then there's Profoto, it's 281 trillion colors, but some of those colors may not be recognizable by the human eye, but with technology advancing, more people may start to use a uh, pro photo. So if you're on a budget and you want to be practicing, uh, what can you recommend? Well, depending on your budget, um, my element, like there's many ways to answer this. You know, we're switching towards mirrorless. So you might want to think about buying a mirrorless camera. And you may want to buy one strobe at a time. Um, stands are coming down about maybe one stand at a time. Try to use what you have if, and just try to um, research it out. And later on, I'll talk about, you know, impact stands and man photo stands. Both are good, in fact, a little more expensive. That is exposure bracketing. A lot of times I just use one stop over and one stop under. Because when I use two, the files are harder to work with. But then when you use one stop apart, the files have more detail and the files are easy to work with in Photoshop when I use HDRFX Pro, stuff like that. I have five Elecom strobes. I have two strip lights. This, you know, produces light in a very narrow way. This is great for a single product. Then I have regular strobes and these are more two times more powerful than these. So the many ways you use strobes, and I recommend using like the soft material box. So you soften the light. In this beauty dish, if you're doing portraits, you might you definitely want to have the plastic in there because it makes the light more flattering. And this is like the use underneath the flex table, like I saw in the preceding screen. And these are my non-strobe lights. And these lights are great for continuous lighting. These lights are great for catching, you know, if you want to splash water. And sometimes a flash vent at fire doesn't reset, but if you have like a catching a water splash, I'd recommend a non-strobe light like this. Let's just have one bulb. This is great for adding light in a natural way with natural light. Then you want to get fancy with five bulbs and these five switches control the five bulbs. And it does come with a soft box. And these are seven um, bulbs. We have three switches. A switch controls this, a switch controls this, a switch controls this. And these are also great. And you can put a soft box on these. These are all my stands. I mean, I've collected these over the years. Some are more expensive, some are not. Two expensive ones are here. The price has not come down in some of in these two big ones, but it has everything else. But these are my big Manfrotto boom screens. If you have a heavy light, you want to use this light, and maybe either this sandbag or this sandbag. And these sandbags, they come with the lights. And these are my other minor, my smaller boom stands. And I bought these from Home Depot, they're bags. And you can fill, these are all filled with rocks. 
So don't worry about sprinkles. And these are all filled with rocks. And these are ground stands. These are regular stands. This is, you know what I mean by like a white reflector. And this comes with the silver, you could zip it on, you could take it off. It also has a gold part in back, has a black part. And the same thing with this. And you can use this as a silver. You can also take this off and use, you know, like you can soften a light by putting this, this white part only in front of a stroke. You can also, you know, you could bounce in light with this, bounce some more dramatic light with the silver part. These are snoots. And these are good for making the light more narrow. And I recommend using the grid because it'll make the light more flattery. And these are great if you want to put a very little light in the face, or if you want to have like a background you can have two of them or one of them aim at the background at a 40 degree angle. And these are great for like using light and you want to make the light dramatic by using like the grids. And he also comes with color gels too. And these are just crates. They can hold things. They can also hold up like a foam board. And the same thing with a bucket. Sometimes stores, they throw these away. So you might want to grab them. And I found on the side of the road, but I decided to bring it to Verizon because it says property of Verizon. So I bring it to Verizon. They said I can have it and, I, and, they, and they gave it to me. So it was sitting on the side of the road. So I decided to pick it up. But that's a nice crate that I picked up the other day. And these are great, like I said, for holding stuff. You can also put a light on top. Same thing with the bucket. I make a lot of my stuff too. I made all these shelves. These are like still act tables. You can also use this for jewelry. This is great for light painting, or if you want to just do one product. And you can put like a white plexiglass sheet on top of the table. This is like a homemade rack. I used to put all my stands in, had a piece of wood screwed over here, but I took it out. I decided to turn this into like a way to put like a Muslim or a black background. And I can make this higher by putting this on a cube. I'll talk about cubes later. These are cubes. I got these at Target. Maybe I'm going to sell for $25, $20. They're great for like creating like a miniature table. Or you could put like a, like a rack on top of this. They use a cement block. I got this at Home Depot. You saw in the other photograph, you could just, for the slide, you could put stuff in here, but you also, you could stand this up. You could put the board in the groove, and this holds like a nice white foam board in place. And I cost $1.39 or $1.78 at Home Depot. And they're great. These blocks are great. And these are stools. These used to be chairs, but the chairs, the back started coming apart. So I just got a parasol, I cut it off. It's a nice stool. And the same thing with this. They were coming apart as scratch. And I couldn't bring this up. Um, Goodwill wouldn't accept this. So, okay, I took it back and I decided to shape it and I decided to cut off the bad parts. And you know, you could stand on it, you can put a light on, you can create that like a plexi table, like 
put a black plexiglass, a white, just a white foam board. He creates a little miniature table. And these are the lenses I used for any still life photography. Um, a lot of times I just pick a prime. Time to time I use my 7200, but I like to use prime because they're cheaper in price and they're a lot sharper, but technology is advancing where the zoom lenses are becoming very, very sharp. I sometimes I use my Canon to 400, 100 to 400 for wildlife, but and these are the only two lenses that I have. I, I used to have other lenses. I also traded some of my other zoom lenses to get some of these lenses. And I'm still using Canon, but eventually I'm going to switch up the mirrorless. And you can use the lenses on the mirrorless. You have to buy another piece of a product or a piece of equipment. Some people call this vibrant induction, which is what Nikon calls it. This is image stabilization. And if you use this feature, don't use a tripod. If you use a tripod, turn it off. But if you don't use a tripod, turn it on. Because if you don't use it correctly, you may have image process problems. You may have color shift problems. Or the image may not come out sharp. So it's just, so with the tripod, turn it off. Without a tripod, turn it on. Now they use autofocus for outdoor lighting. And then for light painting, another still life photography, I like to change it to manual. But first I do a preset to an auto, and then I switch to manual. And I do this like light painting and other still life photography because it's easier in a sensor and it's automatic. The sensor doesn't have to think when you press the shutter or the cable release. And these are my two tripods. And I use these for still life and other outdoor. This is my architecture one, but this is my landscape. I cut this part off so I could have like a ground tripod. A lot of times I just use one or 200 ISO with the tripod. And then without a tripod, I may have to go to 6,600, 3,200. Depends how much light I have. And I always use a cable release for light painting and all this still like photography. Or I could just press a firm shutter on the button, on the shutter button. And this is a camera stand. This is great. You can also attach a weight to make it more solid or sturdy. And again, like the tripods, I like to use ISO 100 to 200. And I could use, without it, I could use a higher ISO. And I always recommend a cable release for any type of stellar photography, even light painting. Or I could also do a firm press on a shutter too. But it all depends on what you want to do. This is the wired cable release that I have. I've used it for years. And I only use it for a lot of my still life photography or all my still life photography. Then you can also press the shutter very firm too. And I do that outdoors. I recommend you use what you're comfortable with, like maybe a remote cable release or a wired or just you can even use your cell phone as a type of remote. Just make sure you read the directions because technology is advancing today. I like to use Novus for cleaning my white plexi tables. A lot of times I just use one for a nice shine and then two for minor scratches. Then I go back to one and then three for heavy, I could go to one, but I recommend going to two and then one. You can buy this at any auto store or at amazon.com or any website that sells auto parts. And this bottom two, like the lens blower, the turkey tweezer, 
This is great for blowing off dust. You want to do this definitely with the black plex table. You can also do this with the white plex table too. Or you just get a you know a lint cloth with just one and make a nice shine. And these are my mirrors. These are mirror plates, armature clips. I used to have like a frame with mirrors, but the frame, the mirrors started falling out of the frame. So I took out all the mirrors. I still have the frame. It looks even better without the mirrors. So I like to use the mirrors. I didn't throw them away. And these mirrors you can buy at CVS. Here's what duct click looks like. You also have armature wire where if you want to hold something and position the camera up here like in a floating motion. It's called armature wire. These are my CUG clamps. I have many of these, more than just this. These are great for holding up scrims with any kind of table, including the white plexiglass table. And these are my spring clamps. I have many more than this. And these are great in all sizes. And some of this, a lot of this, you can buy at a hardware store. You can also buy the clothes pins, you know, like I said, at any type of drugstore that sells laundry stuff. You know what my gels look like? I bought this at Plaza Arts, ordered this from Amazon. And these are my silver cards. This is great for adding in a silver light or a dramatic light without using a strobe. It's great for adding a fill light in a photograph. And you can do the same with a gold card, but you'll have a yellowish tint. But some people in portraits, they like using, you know, the yellow card or the gold card. This is what cinephil looks like, just black aluminum foil. And this is great for creating a very, you know, a student on a very tight budget. Someone asked about tight budgets. I recommend getting this. You can buy this at Amazon for $17 or BH for $25. Prices will probably change. And this is draft film paper. You can buy it at an art store for a few dollars. It's great for creating a plastic fusion backgrounds. These are all my scrims. These are stretcher art frames. And these are, you know, this is already a built frame I bought from Target. And you can just staple the draft paper with staples. And I, you can buy that at Plaza Arts, a staple gun and staples. So my plexiglass sheets, you have black, white, silver, I mean, clear. In many ways, you can use clear like with food. You can have like a white background on the floor or even a strobe pointing up. And you have the food in like a floating position. And some people require this. Then you have white plexiglass sheets. You can create a small table or you can use as soften a light. And you have black for creating a small table. You can even use a small black plex sheet as a, as a black card bleeding when a strobe bleeds out too much light. And these are big white cards. They for great for creating white backgrounds. You can also create a gray background if you aim the light at a certain way. Like aim the light at the floor at a 40 frame angle. You could have two lights over here and you get a nice gray background. Then the big black cards you can create a nice black background or dark background. Then if you want a like a light back a light brown background, you can do the same thing with the two lights. And you can also use these black cards for taking out glares or to control when a strobe leads too much light, out too much light. Now I'm gonna do 
my um the demo. I'm going to So everyone should be able to see my screen, correct? Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to do the Adobe Camera Raw demo where I'm just going to talk about the Adobe Camera Raw. So what I'm going to do I'm going to you could do opening camera all or control or command R. If you want to start all over, you can go like this. You can reset the default, which we're going to do. I'm going to do a camera raw. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the white balance. Try to find like a white or neutral gray. Then I'm going to work my way down. I always want to try to decrease the highlights. I think I'm going to increase the shadows. I don't want to touch the white or blacks. I want to increase the texture. I want to increase the clarity. That's just a basic. I'm going to try to do like an S curve. And I'm going to do sharpening. Noise reduction, I'm going to put it at 50. Color noise reduction. I like to use 30. But look at the color. Look at the photograph. What are you doing? Watch what happens. I mean, your eyes are very important. I'm not going to touch the color mixer. Color grading. I'm going to work with the highlights, midtones. If you want to put all three. Optics. I'm going to remove chromatic aberration problems. And then I'm going to use, use profile corrections. And here I'm using the 35 meter lens. I'm using a Canon. I'm going to just do the auto. I'm just. I'm going to take care of the vignetting just by moving it up by 17 plus. Then I'm going to click done. This shot I did last night, I'm going to go here. You can do open any camera roll or command and control R. Reset the default. Now I'm going to just do opening camera all or control or command R. There's a white bounce. I'm going to try to find a gray or just a white. I'm going to improve my contrast. I'm going to improve my shadows. Highlights, we got to do something. It's probably too powerful. Shadows. You know, in many ways, you could just go like this. If there's data, I recommend doing the S curve. 
in detail, sharpening for products, I like to use over 140. Noise reduction, I like to put it at 50. Color noise reduction, maybe five to 10 more. I don't want to touch color mixer, color grading. You can work with highlights, shadows, midtones, all three. If I go here, I like to remove chromatic aberrations, use profile corrections. It tells me what lens I'm using the 85 prime lens. Some vignetting problems. I'm trying to bring out this most important part is this. I did that one. Again, I'm going to go to camera raw or control command R. As I want to start all over, I'm going to reset the default. I'm going to click done. I just want to start over. Open camera raw, command and control R. I also, you want to try to think how dimensionality to your light. I think that if I'm looking at this image, a little bit overexposed. Did he curve? Sometimes you just raise it up to bring out the subject more. Sometimes you do an S-curve. When you're trying to fix the problems early in camera raw, Optics, move camera. Geometry, I'm just going to click the A. There are other ways you can use this, but this is the easiest. You just click the auto. I think I'm going to go to some vignetting. I'm going to just, there. Okay, now I want to do a new share. Now I want to go into Adobe Photoshop. And so now, let's see. I'm going to close this image out. I'm going to go to those raw files. I'm going to start with this one, the one I did yesterday. I've got work to do on this image. I'm going to do, I'm going to run some actions. This is all, this is 
so many actions in one grip, but I'll talk about that later. I'm going to invert it by controlling control I. So what I want to do is I'm going to make sure I'm in norm blending mode, normal blending mode when I paint for this. I'm going to make my brush bigger. Person the left or right French brace key. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in more detail. I'm going to burn at a Lumosity blend mode. Some people just burn in what they want to improve. Other people burn everything. Well, I'm going to, improve, I'm just going to, I'm going to do the whole file. I'm going to burn every part. So I'm revealing more of the products. Make my brush bigger. And I'm gonna dodge. I'm gonna put more light into it using a screen blend mode. Again, some people just, they just, they dodge the light part of the models they want to improve or anything they want to improve. In many ways you can use this action. Now, If you want to make the file more white, you can use this under Control Z. Suppose you want to make the file more black in a click. This is great for putting contrast. I'm gonna make this file more white. Okay, and let's see now. Sometimes what I could do is this. I want to improve parts of it. You could put this out of multiply mo blend mode. I'm going to bring up the subject a little more. And then in many ways, I combine actions. I'm going to talk about that next. Uh, in many ways to sharpen, you can use, you know, the high pass. You can use you know, the sharpen. Then after you use a sharpen, then you want to come over here, edit, and in sharp mask. You leave that 100, I do the mosity. And so when I, now I'm going to talk about the actions. I'm going to get out of button mode. See this action, sharpen high pass, sharpen with fade. 
Anytime you see like play action, this action is called somewhere else. Dust and scratches. Then in the first action that I did, the burn, dodge and burn. Dodge and burn. This action is called somewhere else. I'm going to call other actions. So you need to be out of button mode when you create an action. I'm going to put it back in button mode. Dusts and scratches. I have it set at three in the macro. Then sometimes I use all the fringe. It's where you take out small white specks. This layer. This has I have this all in the action. Then suppose I want to put a black frame on it. What the hell? I don't see any, let's see, okay. So when I did this, the images, you know, the longest side, the height is set to 4,000 and I have it at resolution of 200 pixels per inch. If the width were the longest, the width would be, you know, 4,000 with the same resolution. So when I call an action, this is a group of actions. It calls this, it has a condition. If it is landscape, then I call this action. If it's not, I call this action. So the actions are elsewhere in this program. And then, and all I do is just click buttons. And then when I save it, these are my export preferences. Quality 100, I convert the sRGB, and I ask every time I export where I want to save it. So when I just do this, click export, and that's how where I want to save it. I'm not going to save any changes. I'm going to go to the next raw file. Already made the changes. I'm going to click open. So I'm going to run my actions. See, I produce a white signature and a black signature. Right. 
I usually use one, I usually use one to delete the other. So if this were like a black, I'd use the white. I'm going to control it by controlling control R. Now, let's see. And then I want to send a question. Okay. Now, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make my brush bigger. Oops, multiply. Make sure you're in blend mode. Um, the mode is normal. Cassie 100. Now I'm going to do something different. So I burn in the velocity blend mode. I'm putting more details in the shadow. Now I'm going to do something different. You no, know, this is not perfect, but I'm just demonstrating for teaching it. You know, we're just dodging in lighting improvements. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do frequency separation. Where High frequency, which is really a high pass filter, and then just the regular layer. I like to do all my editing up here. I want to make sure that this is not checked. Come over here. I'll do shift F5 and you can change the white. But in this case, I'm going to be content aware. Shift F5. It's not perfect, but I control Z. But For some people, they have a layer for every control here. I like to put everything in one layer. And it's just a fancy way to edit your document in a more intelligent way. I'm going to do is I'm going to get in my actions. Let's see. I want to come over here. I'm going to sharpen differently. Do the high pass. Actually, I'm going to go back. Actually, I'm going to get control Z. I'm going to go edit. There. Under actions, I'm going to use a different. I want to use, uh, I'm going to use sharpen with fade, where I use, you know, sharpen. Just have it with any, just for teaching purposes. 
Then if I want to put more effect on the sharpening, I go here. Easy to have this at 100, but I want to put the luminosity. And that's also good for making sharpening with contrast. Then, you know, like I use, use a speckle, take some small specks, you dust and scratches. I like to put this at three. You know, my actions, I have, I have those filth, those actions, you know, grouped in some of these. Like the speckle, those instructions. When it says play action, I call the action. I come over here. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the one I'm using is unavailable, but you might be able to find other plexiglass tables. I recommend the one from Amazon because it's cheaper, but things are changing. You might want to try BH, but be careful that BH, the, the, the man photo frame. So try Amazon first. Yeah. This table is not available anymore, but I still have the same table. It's a great table. Yeah. I want to put on a different frame. Because I want to put on a different frame and the image. Now I gotta correct the action. The height should be four thousand and this should be two hundred. I gotta correct that. I'm going to go control Z. I'm going to do the black action. I'm going to image in the, you know, height is 4,000 because it's bigger. We talked about how we exported. I'm going to do one more file. Now, let's see, there we go. I'm just gonna say open. Make it smaller. And what I could do is here, I can make a copy of the background layer. I can go to the filter. I can also, you know, turn this into a smart object. So then I'm going to come over here, called for non-destructive editing. I'd like to get rid of that vignette. I'm going to over exaggerate to teach. So, you know, so if I want to go back and make a correction, I can make the corrections. It just, it puts the characters in like a container. It's great for non-destructive non editing. I'm going to do my actions. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to control, I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to get the brush. Let's see. The way layer that I want. There. So 
there. So I invert it now. See the brush? You know, white reveals black size, but my goal is to reveal everything. Again, and if I wanted to make, let me see, make sure you're on this part of the layer. This part of the layer is for masking, this part of the layer is for the adjustments. Suppose I want to make this more white. As I want to make this more black, click on the first drop of here. Or you want to just make this like a gray, like a final neutral. What I want to do is my goal is to bring out the subject better. Backgrounds killing it, but I want to try doing is I try selecting the subject. I'm going to do. I'm not going to really going to select the subject. I'm going to do select inverse. Why? Because the background's killing the subject, and then I want to put it in an adjustment layer. You can fancy things with darken. You can fancy things with multiply. That's the thing. Wrong layer. Make sure in the right layer. Put this in regular. Watch what you want to do the image, like screen, lighten. See difference. That's cool black background, but I mean, all sorts of things you can do with blending modes. And I'm going to over here, I'm going to put my black frame. If I want to save it, I already made my effort. I just click export and it tells me settings already done. I'm not going to save any changes. So I did the demo. And these are all my Facebook groups. My biggest one is my still life fine art photography. It used to be called still life creative, but since a lot of people are producing fine art art, I decided to put fine art there. It's growing every day. This is my architecture and city sign group. You can post anything, any type of uh, photograph in here, as long as it abides to the Facebook rules. I'm helping in this group. It's you know sculpting with light, but the trails are not the subject. And then I created a group where if you want to produce a headshot for a product, you can come here. And this group's growing slowly. These are my media groups. And then these are my business links: Instagram, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, my founder website, and my portfolio.
Is there any questions overall? I don't see any in the chat. I answer that one. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, um, you could just email me. Um, oh, okay. I could put these links in the meetup. But yeah, I'll do that. Yes, I'll put the links in. The, I'll put the links in all the uh, meetup groups. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Yeah, I'll do that very very soon. I'll do that after we, after it finishes converting the recording. So you have it tonight, the links. And then I have a recording to my YouTube. You can listen and I'll have it separate links to different parts of this uh, webinar. Okay, I don't think there are any uh, questions. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna end and I'll post, when I work on the video, I post it to the meetup group and I'll post a link to the Facebook group tonight on all the meetup pages. Thank you for letting me uh, give this presentation and maybe when you have time, like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. <laughs>